uh, our training tip of the week. Uh, what we want to talk about is land banks. Uh, it's kind of something that have, have sprung up since about uh, 2005, mid 2000s, really, up, you know, 2010. And over the last 10, 15 years, uh, there's been a, a kind of a big change, and there's a lot of inventory that's moved from county inventory into land bank inventory. Yeah, in fact, um, this is probably so. It's probably more common now, almost, than uh, you know, to find uh, counties that are using land banks than it is to find counties that have uh, a lot of over-the-counter inventory. Um, you know, to help you understand exactly what a land bank is, um, they are <clears throat> nonprofit organizations that are. Uh, sometimes set up by the county to help them manage their, uh, their you know, county held or, or uh, uh, city held land. Um, any of these properties that the county ends up essentially owning because it goes through foreclosure, uh, you know, can sit on the books. Sometimes in some places, like in certain cities, they have crazy amounts of inventory. You know, that uh, you know they've got thousands of properties, and a lot of them are you know old dilapidated houses. Some of them are nice houses. Uh, the the land banks basically are just nonprofits that the county sets up to help them manage it. Yeah, so you're really the purpose of the land bank is to return these properties uh, to productive use, get new owners into them, and and really they're set up to meet uh, the different communities' goals. Like Shade was talking about, how there's some in these areas where there's a lot of dilapidated property. They want to be able to put these back into productive use if if they need to be torn down. Go ahead and do that. So they're really there to manage uh, these tax defaulted properties because that's not really something the county does. Yeah, at least <clears throat> they don't have um, the time to really you know, dedicate to the properties the way that they need. Uh, now, what's interesting about land banks is they are not new. You know, I mean, they've been around since um, since the 1930s, um, and we're really around there to help provide cheap land for uh, for housing. But it's really been over the last 10 to 15 years that we've seen uh, the number of land banks just um, explode. You know, I mean, we, uh, there. You know, 15 years ago, it was hard to find counties that had land banks, and suddenly they're all over. Yeah. Well, really, in 2009, the Department of Housing and Urban Development issued a report where they started embracing land banks, and a lot of uh, states at that time went ahead and set up uh, land bank programs. And so, really, since that time, we've seen quite a few of these land banks pop up with some, with some states having, you know, many in with that, uh, throughout that state. Yeah, so uh, a question, let's answer this. How do land banks get property? Um, and basically there are a couple of different ways that they, they get properties. Um, you know, the first one we have here is non-sold tax deed properties, or essentially stuff that doesn't get purchased in the auction uh, becomes county inventory. And so that's one of the ways the land banks get it. Yeah, another way is through city and county held land. So these could be uh, land that used to be within their inventory. They could be city properties they picked up, uh, you know, in addition to public donations. So a lot of times uh, people will donate the land to the city or to the county. And then at that point, they'll put these properties into the land banks and distribute them that way. Yeah. Now, um you know, one thing that's important to note about land banks, or I guess important to understand, um, is exactly how they work, you know, um, and, you know, what their goals are. See, one of the things that's interesting when you're dealing with the county is that, you know, you have a party that's selling something, but they don't have any personal interest in how much it sells for, you know. And with a land bank, what happens is you, you this is the first time you, know, you have kind of a group that is more heavily involved with the property. Uh, and, and so... Uh, there are both benefits and drawbacks, really. Yeah, well, it, it takes cooperation. It takes cooperation on the local level, if it's, if it's a county land bank or a city land bank. It also takes a state level. You know, state governments are going to set the rules on the land banks for that state. And then the individual land banks will abide by those rules. Yeah, so really what it means is that, um, you know, each land bank can be different, you know, and uh, can have uh, basically different criteria that they set for buying properties or may decide, uh, you know, different, uh, you know, bid or purchase amounts. Um, you know, it really varies quite a bit from land bank to land bank, um, as does uh, the kind of inventory you'll find in a land bank. Some counties have lots and others have um, very little. So, um, you know, you really have to almost, um, 
you have to almost deal with each individual land bank to figure out exactly how they sell property. You may need to go on the website and look or uh, potentially even call them. Yeah, well, and, and many of them have pretty good websites set up. It's pretty clear on, on how they do it. You just need to spend a little time on each one of the websites. Now, land banks can either offer land, building lots, but they can also offer homes as well. Yeah, really. Um, both types of, of properties. Now, it's you know we obviously see a lot of um, land and lots that come through tax sales. Um, you know that is uh, is common you know, because those properties are it's you know common to see them get lost to property taxes, but also structured homes. Um, and uh, you know these will include some that are in uh, you know good condition. Some of them that are occupied, even you know some that. Uh, that are certainly um, good and usable properties uh, you know, can end up in land banks. Um, although, you know, I mean, we love trying to get to auctions, but in some areas, uh, you know, they just don't have enough bidders at the auctions to buy up everything, and so they end up having good inventory in their land bank. Yeah, well, and when it comes to land, some of these lands, these lots or building lots, pieces of land, may require you to have a development plan in place. Uh, so in certain areas, they're going to have more requirements. If you're going to buy this lot, you need to do something with it. You need to be building on it. Yeah. Others are going to have, you know, uh, be a lot less lenient, and they're just interested in getting that into a new property owner's uh, hands. So it'll really depend on the individual land banks. And the same thing can be said about the structured properties. You know, some of them will have requirements that you have to have this rehab done within a set time frame. Usually it's about a year. And things need to be done within that time frame, and the county will go ahead and come back and check. So they may sell the property for really cheap. In fact, sometimes you can buy them for $100. But they're going to require that this rehab be done within a certain time frame. And in fact, many of them will have, uh, you know, packets or already have somebody that's gone through it and checked it out beforehand. Yeah, in fact, yeah, one of the benefits sometimes of land banks is uh, sometimes they have additional property information. You know, especially with improved properties, uh, you know, sometimes they will uh, they'll make an effort to uh, try to figure out exactly what all their inventory is. You know, and so they'll get current photos and stuff. I've seen that in land banks where, um, you know, they are basically trying to get properties fixed up, and so they'll even have um, I've seen before where where they have uh, basically estimates on what it would cost to have everything fixed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So as far as land banks, there's about two hundred of them. Uh, available in the United States right now. Now some of these have tons of properties, thousands of properties, while others may just have you know half a dozen or a dozen properties. It really depends on how much inventory that individual uh, uh, county has and they can have them in county and even cities can set up land banks in some areas as well. Yeah, in fact, yeah, there, uh, there's a surprising number. I, I think the number could be much higher than that. You know, it could be double that, you know, who knows. But they're, they're, they've been growing so fast that it's been hard to keep up on just how many there are uh, because once they, you know, come up in one county, you know, usually many other counties in the area also do it. Um, so you really have to check with East Land Bank in order to look at their inventory. Um, and. You know, some of the things also, uh, we can get better information sometimes on some of the larger land banks. You know, they do have better GIS maps sometimes and, um, and better records that make it easier to uh, learn more about the property or, you know, images of the property. Well, instruments. and that's going to be more important if you're going through a big list. I mean, if you only have five or six properties, it doesn't take too long to go and look at those properties. But if you have a big list, that's where having some of these online maps can make it a lot easier. You know, like I mentioned, or like Shaden might have mentioned before, some of these smaller land banks, you know, they may not have a huge amount of properties. This one here is just a, a smaller one in central Illinois. Uh, so these are some of probably, uh, maybe even a couple of the counties within the area have, have bounded together. So instead of having the expense of having a land bank, and one thing to mention, most of these are going to be nonprofit. So they're set up to essentially uh, be a nonprofit organization. In fact, I would say probably over 75, 80% of them are probably going to be nonprofits. Yeah. Now, yeah, in fact, you can see that in this example that they have right here, um, it was, uh, you know, I mean, they say right there to improve communities by stabilizing and revitalizing property. And this was a teardown, you know, where. Uh, they, you know, they, they tore down a condemned structure and now it is... Uh, probably reselling the lot. Yep. In fact, in some of these areas, they're going through and tearing down a lot of these homes because uh, they're really just a, a, 
uh, you know, they're a nuisance and a safety hazard. Yeah. Uh, you know, they can be, be set on fire. There can be all kinds of illegal activities within them. So really, from the county or the city's uh, point of view, it's better to go ahead and tear these properties down, sell the land, and and move on from there. Yeah, it's a fresh start. Uh, so this is the uh, the list here for the Central Illinois uh, Land Bank Authority. You know, pretty small list, uh, but we can see some of the information they have right here. They provide us with um, what city or you know village the property is in, uh, an address, and then we have um, a PIN number and then a link to the to the GIS on it. You know, as you're looking up there, you know, it says Honer Occupied Rehab, and I'm not sure exactly what that is, but it kind of reminded me to talk about. Uh, a lot of these will have uh, special deals if you are a first-time home buyer or or trying to buy property within that area. Yeah, or if you're, if you're local. local. Yeah, if, yeah. You're, if you're local, that's one thing that, yeah, it's worth mentioning is that um, you know, look to see if there are land banks, you know, if there's a land bank in your area because um, they always give priority to locals first. Yeah, well, you can see up there, you know, for owner-occupied rehab, meaning you want to buy it, you want to live in it, or for contractors, mm -hmm. you know, so they a lot of them will have options like that where, it, you know, depending if you're looking to buy it for yourself or if you're looking to do it more as an investor. Yeah. Now, uh, this is a different land bank that we're looking at here. This is the State Land Bank Authority for um, for Michigan, I believe it is. Yeah. Yeah, we can see down there at the bottom, there's about 2,400 properties available for sale uh, all throughout throughout the individual state. And I believe that, you know, a lot of the individual counties have land banks mm -hmm. as well and will have their own division. And I think a, a lot of those individual county land banks, or at least some of those properties, will be included in here as well. So, you, you know, this is kind of showing a bunch of the properties that are available uh, throughout the throughout Michigan, uh, in some of the smaller land banks that are county held. Yeah. So here, uh, you know, we're looking at a. Uh, this is a home, you know, that is currently in uh, in this Michigan land bank. Yeah. This particular one won't be eligible to be bid on till February first. So it's an upcoming property uh, where uh, you know they're going to be putting it on on here on the land bank, and and they'll be accepting offers on it. But this particular one is it won't be available to be purchased up until February first. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. You see, the image though is from J July of this year. Yeah. It's just an example of uh, a land bank within that same. Uh, I mean, a property within that same land bank, uh, an acre parcel. Uh, you know, that's that's essentially el eligible to be purchased. And here we have um, another uh, land bank. This is for uh, for Albany County, um, New York, and this is uh, more like the Michigan um, you know land bank style, where we have you know an overhead map, and then we have the uh, properties you know uh, also on the right, and then everything is color coordinated you know according to um, you know whether they are for sale or whether uh, uh, you know it's you know somewhere in the process. Yeah. Well, and. A lot of the larger land banks use this type of, of system, you know, if not this exact same one, but one very similar to it. Yeah, yeah. So we can see here, you know, there were about, you know, close to what, 759 properties in there, but, um, but we can see it, a lot of those are already sold. Yeah, it's going to it's going to include, you know, sold properties for sale, all different types. In fact, this first property was right there. We could see it was one of the first properties that ended up selling for eight thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, and really um, estimated tax balance uh, tax balance paid by buyer, so thirty six hundred. Yeah, yeah, that's not too bad. That's actually a really great price. It looks like a pretty clean little house. Yeah, I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure it needed you know work, but essentially you're buying them for you know under ten grand at this point. Yeah. There's a property that's currently for sale on the land bank for eight grand. Uh, you know, um, similar type property. You know that you can pick up. Uh, these are these type of properties are available all throughout the country. Yeah, with uh, interior images too. Yeah. Well, and that's one thing about these properties is you can go through. You can send your inspector through. A lot of them will have already have inspections done. They give you a lineup of everything that needs to be done and the estimated cost 
Now, I think if you were doing it yourself, and that's where you need to check with these individual land banks to see what their rules are. Some of them you can do the rehab yourself or hire your own contractors, and I think you could do it for probably cheaper than some of these estimates. But you've got to see what are the individual rules within that land bank. Yeah, and here we have um, a vacant lot that uh, you know is in that same county uh, that is available currently for six hundred dollars. Yeah, you know a, a building lot there. Now, one thing we'd go through and do the same thing, check to make sure it's buildable. But it does look like it. You know, in fact, if you're looking at some of the lots next to it, it's even a little bit bigger than some of the other ones. Yeah, it's interesting. So, uh, how do you buy you know these properties in land banks? Uh, so there are a couple of different systems that land banks um, will use, but most land banks are going to have um, a minimum bid amount or a purchase price that they will uh, they'll, they'll have, or they may have you submit offers. You know, some may do that, but in in many cases, though, they'll actually just set you know a minimum purchase price. Yeah, well, even like the ones we saw, you know, that home bill for eight grand, the lot available for six grand. Uh, some of these land banks, uh, especially sm smaller land banks, are going to focus more on people that are looking to buy a home or buy land for themselves. Uh, a lot of the larger ones are going to be focusing to anyone, you yeah. know, an investor. Yeah. So, a few things to remember about land banks. Um, you know, really, uh, one of them is just that, you know, with each land bank, you're going to need to learn... Uh, what some of the details, you know, specifically how they operate, what they allow, what they don't, because, um, you know, they are literally as varied as the tax cells themselves in terms of, uh, you know, what, what they allow uh, and and how, you know, the, what the process might look like to buy properties from them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There could be a great way for people that are living within an area to find property. Uh, so, you know, it's worth seeing, is there a land bank available in my area and, you know, what are, what type of property are available? And if you, you know, if there is homes and, and if that may be an option. Yeah, it's definitely worth checking to see if there is a land bank in your own area. Because yeah. um, that's always a great place to start looking for properties. Well, it's, it's a great way for investors to be able to, to buy property and pick up property as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, let's go back one thing real quick as well, because I want to show the land banks real quick. Just oh, yeah. oh, yeah, that's right. So let's do that. Just because uh, we talked about them. Yeah. You know, the land banks, there's not really a place you can go to, to, to get all the land banks, at least that we can find online. And so that's part of the reason we provide them for our members on our, on our, on our membership program. And you can see how certain, certain states have a lot, you know. Georgia has quite a few where another state may only have three or four. Mm -hmm. But there's all kinds of different ones. Uh, some of them are going to be in the big cities. Some of them will have tons of property. Some of them will be a, a bit smaller. But there really is probably 20, uh, 25 different states that offer some type of land bank. Yeah. Yeah, really. Uh, and again, you know, we can automatically link to, um, to any of these. And, uh, you know, with the land banks, uh, land bank properties for sale is what we're usually looking for here. And, you know, you can see that uh, you know, sometimes they have... Let me go further. They have their list. Keep going up. Uh oh, you're on Albany. I think we were looking at the other one. Albany. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so this one, they actually, in Albany, they have um, an interactive map and... Yeah, you can download the list or you can click on the interactive map. And the list probably has the new ones that they're putting out for sale. This is going to include ones that have sold and, you know, ones that are for sale, depending on their status. Yeah, so we can see we have... Uh, uh, we could look and we have for sale buildings uh, and then we have some for sale lots. So these like the green and the blue if we wanted. So there's one a building here that is, you know, that is for sale currently. And look at that, you know, so it's, it's already been kind of 
you know, gut it out basically so that it's just framing in there. Yeah. It looks like asking price of five thousand built in nineteen twenty. Yeah. Well And you can see all these others here. You know, current assessment, current assessment on these ones here. Yeah, a lot of lot of opportunity, you know, to check out and see what's available in your own area or from an investing standpoint as well. Yeah.